after last weekend in Mexico City, Formula 1 moves on to the Lone Star State of Austin, Texas. Lewis Hamilton has a chance to be crowned a six-time champion this weekend. All he needs to do is score four more points than Valtteri Bottas. And that is quite easy with the point system currently engaged in Formula 1. So, Formula 1 is about to have another record holder. It will be seven for Schumacher, six for Hamilton, five for Fangio. But what exactly does that entail? Let's take a look at the Drivers' and the Constructors' Championship going into this round 19 of the season. Formula One leaves Mexico and heads up the road to Austin, Texas, the Lone Star State for round 19 of 2019. And we start off this incredible circuit cherry-picked with the very best of all the racetracks around the world. A purpose-built racetrack here in America for Formula One is all we could ever have asked for after many years of trying. Since 2012, the circuit in the Americas has made Formula One very, very welcome. And we have a home here in the United States. In the calendar, there is only three more races remaining here in Austin for the United States Grand Prix. Two weeks time, we're in Brazil. And then in just two more weeks, four weeks to the day today, we will end in Abu Dhabi on the 1st of December. Lewis Hamilton leads the Drivers' Championship here. All he needs to do is score four more points in Valtteri Bottas. And he is the 2019 World Champion and a six-time World Champion. The battle between the two Ferraris is quite close. 236 for Leclerc, 230 for Vettel. Max Verstappen closing in as well. But the battle for sixth is close as well, with Gasly, Sainz and Albon just a few points separate them. But there is a massive, massive battle with the midfield teams of Renault, McLaren, Toro Rosso, Alfa Romeo and Racing Point and Haas as well with Kevin Magnussen. The t it's honestly so close. Perez 43, 38 for Hulkenberg. Uh, Ricardo as well. Norris, Kvyat, Raikkonen and Stroll, Magnussen all battling it out and could end up anywhere over the next few races. Grosjean just ahead on eight points. Giovinazzi still on four. Robert Kibitz on one. And no points yet for George Russell. In the Constructors' Championship, Mercedes are leading the way. They are the world champions of 2019, no doubt about that. But the battle very much is between Renault, Toro Rosso and Racing Point. Toro Rosso and Racing Point level on points actually coming in. So it's a three-way fight for fifth in the title. Good afternoon. Welcome to your Thursday weekend preview for the 2019 American Grand Prix, or officially the United States Grand Prix, and maybe not the only American Grand Prix going to be in the future, because in 2021, Miami could come on the calendar. But right now, the Circuit of the Americas is our host, and we have a wonderful, wonderful time here every year as well. Let's go on just quickly to some news that broke earlier on. The announcement of the 2021 Formula One regulations. The cars have been redesigned. They now have more of an IndyCar look and more of a spec series look. They now have 3.5 seconds slower than what they are now, so back to similar speeds we saw in 2016. They've been completely redesigned so that the aerodynamics and the downforce aren't key. It's now going to create clean air effects so that the drivers can follow at close speeds and hopefully a lot more overtaking. DRS is still a factor, but it's no longer the only opportunity that drivers will have to overtake. Also announced during that meeting was the extension of the Formula 1 race calendar to 25 races as the maximum out of the current 21 we have. So if the season starts earlier, finishes later with a few triple headers, MotoGP does triple headers we did it once last year but if we do it more towards the beginning of the season I don't think people will mind so much. Also another factor is that the finally finally after it was promised back in 2010 when Hispania Marussia, uh, at that time it was Virgin Racing and Caterham came in with Cosworth Engines they were said don't worry you're coming into a cost cap sport. It was never enforced but finally, finally Formula 1 has a cost cap, 175 million per year and I know it does sound an awful lot but Formula 1 teams currently are going near, in, nearly into the 75 million per season just at the pre-season stage. So to have 175 million for development and the engines and the cars across the whole year year is very very tight the engines themselves the all the power units were supposed to come out are 12.5 million each 
and then you've got to have three of those and they always go over more so already that's eating into the budget of 175 million so it's not an awful lot so we should see a lot more closer racing and a lot more action to be compared to what we've seen this year i think we all agree that the best race this year was the german grand prix and that was in wet conditions we haven't actually had a great dry race austria got close but uh, we were on a string of good races but uh, germany would beat them all with being in the rain so we'll have more on that with the look at the cars as well. We looked, touched on it briefly a few months ago at the Belgian Grand Prix. But we'll have a look more in depth on Sunday in our race preview show at the touchscreen. Right, let's get on to looking at the circuit of the Americas then. It's changed a lot since when we first came here. The track now more incredibly bumpy. We see it with MotoGP. Uh, we see it with IndyCar as well. The track has shifted a lot over the years. But it still is an incredible challenge. It's cherry picking the best pits of all of the circuits across the world and it is a unique challenge to a Formula 1 driver. Let's take a look then on board with the only American team on the grid of Haas F1 and take a look at the circuit of the Americas. Ah! Let's take a look around the purpose-built circuit in the Americas specifically for Formula 1. First used back in 2012 with a 5.513km circuit. A large uphill section into turn one, hold it in seventh gear, break all the way down into second gear, take a very late apex to get the power on early at the exit. As you drop downhill into turns two, into turn now three, four, and five, ride the curve, slimmer two, Maggots and Beckett and Silverstone, sixth gear, past the first sector checkpoint down, fifth gear, as you come into turn seven. Eight and nine now at the top of the hill, a very weird combination, wants to throw you out wide. Avoid the bump at the exit, full opposite lock and away now down towards turn 10. And the next heavy braking zone, the second heaviest on the track, turn 11, hard on the brakes, down to second gear, another late apex, get the power on mid corner, don't spin up the car and head down now, the long, long back straight. Open up the DRS as well, seventh gear, eighth gear, let's listen to the car sing. Ready on the braking point now, at 100 metres, brake 50 metres and down to second gear, late apex, turn to 12, 13 to 14 form a sort of a double power legs around on itself. So does the next six segments of corners into turn to 15. Renner GP hate this corner, Formula 1 drivers love it because it goes round now. The long turn, numbers 17 and 18, similar to Istanbul's turn 8. Before a tricky car park stop section at turn 19, the car just wants to run wide as soon as you go through. IndyCar can't take that corner properly, they have to go off the track. Turn 20, another stop-start corner, and to the line, and that is a lap of the Circuit of the Americas here in Austin, Texas. On board with America's own Haas F1. <laughs> A fascinating circuit, then the circuit of the Americas, and to go on board as well with the Haas F1 car. It took five attempts for me to get uh, that lap right as well. It is very tricky if you go offline at one point, you're into the barriers. All right, let's pick up where we left off and go on with what we're having with some of the drivers' press conference and what they said on Thursdays as well. Uh, rookies reflect uh, on inspirational Hamilton ahead of sixth uh, consecutive charge here at Cota. Uh, as well, Landon, Landon Norris... Uh, said, I guess he's a guy I've always looked to do since I was young, a driver who I've loved uh, to watch. I've been very excited to watch a lot of his races since I started watching F1 when I was six or seven years old. Rookie. I was watching it since I was born. Um, I've always been able to watch a lot of races and it gives a bit of, I wouldn't say belief or faith, but it gives a lot of confidence knowing or hoping to go into the future and emulate him in a way. London I is certainly one of the upcoming stars of the British motorsport when Hamilton eventually retires, uh, which everybody does, but uh, he's going on, he's saying that he's going to go on for at least another five, six more years so he could easily uh, get past uh, Schumacher's uh, seven world titles. Uh, it was a bit of an interesting one earlier on. Um, Ferrari are hoping that the cold weather uh, that is here in Austin at the moment, I mean, currently it is uh, only, it's uh, well, 30 degrees Fahrenheit. It's dropped to 28 Fahrenheit, which beats a new record uh, for how cold it is in Austin. But it's only one degree uh, it's, uh, centigrade in, well, English. Uh, but it is incredibly cold, and that means that the things we saw at pre-season testing uh, would be more reflective. Now, I was at the pre-season testing, as you can see, uh, but the second test was incredibly hot. I mean, we all went there with winter gear on, 
and we had to change into shorts and a t-shirt on the second day because it was just so hot but in the afternoon it did get very cold and that's when Ferrari were really strong the end of the final day of pre-season testing they were four thousandths of a second quicker than the Mercedes team so honestly they have got the pace and especially in the first test uh, of the year pre-season test number one Ferrari were quick in the cold conditions that we had but FP, uh, the uh, well pre-season test two that I was there for for the four days they were stronger again, but it was much, much warmer. So Ferrari hoping that the cold conditions here in Austin will elevate uh, their chances of a victory. I mean, they did win here last year with Kimi Raikkonen, after all. Uh, the press conference where Max Verstappen uh, responded to the comments that Lewis Hamilton and Sebastian Vettel said to him in the Me- uh, back in the Mexican Grand Prix that Hamilton and uh, Vettel leave him space and always cautious when racing him. Why admit that? Because now Verstappen's just going to go for it every time and know that they're going to jump out of the way. But I don't, as I said in the podcast, uh, I implore you to go listen to that as well from last time in Mexico. I don't think it was Verstappen's fault, the turn one incident. I do think it was his fault with what happened later on in the race with Bottas getting the puncher. But that one, that was more Lewis and Verstappen trying to get out of the way. Lewis went straight at turn three. Verstappen had nowhere to go. So that was Lewis's fault, all in all. But uh, it should be an interesting weekend. Right, it's cold tomorrow in FP1. Very, very cold. FP2 looking to be a little bit warmer by about 5 degrees. So that's going to play into a factor that the teams aren't going to have representative data going into Saturday and Sunday, which are due to be in the high 20s, high 30s in centigrade temperature. So it should be quite good. Also, something to look out for, the teams are testing uh, the 2020 Pirelli compounds tomorrow in FP1 and 2. So they're going to save an extra set of tyres because they get a free two... They get two free sets of tyres to test out. In fact, we get, I think we get to test out all of them. So they get a hell of a lot more free tyres to test out. So a lot more running predicted tomorrow. Right, we'll be back on Friday for the Friday practice review later on in the evening. Bye for now.